AI dungeon. Once again, this time, the new dragon AI. So there's a big update that makes things a lot more playable, a lot more coherent. And um, I think this is going to be very interesting. So I'm using the core AI. Dragon is more powerful, able to generate much more interesting and engaging stories. Um, people say disable safe mode. Wasn't on last time either. I just checked. So... Here we are again. I'm gonna do one of the art playlists, but I'm gonna shuffle it. So I don't know, we could get anything. Have you been taught to use the pin function? <clears throat> uh, yeah, I just enabled the dragon AI. And, um... I don't know what the pin function is, but we'll, we'll pick fantasy. We're gonna start with fantasy, keep it simple. And, um, I guess I'll be... A knight. No, we'll, we'll be, um... Peasant. Enter your character's name. Um, bin, bindi, binti. Here we go. Generating story. Let's begin. You are Binti, a peasant living in a small village in the kingdom of Larian. You have a pitchfork and nothing else. You dream of getting out of your village and having an adventure. You go to your fields and begin working. You look up and see a small flying machine. It's one of those newfangled airships. It's just like the one you've seen in paintings. You think to yourself, this is it. This is my chance to have an adventure. Walk to... Hmm, you see a... Throw... Pitchfork... At... Flying... Machine. It's a UFO. There's the theme tonight, chat. Aliens. You throw your pitchfork at the airship, the tines stick into the wood of the ship, and the airship stops suddenly knocking you over. What? The door opens, and a man in a trench coat falls out. He is clutching his side, which is bleeding profusely. Help. Help. The man. So, uh, it's a li is it more coherent? I don't know. We'll, we'll see. You approach the man who looks to be in his late twenties or early thirties. He has slicked back brown hair and is clean shaven. Are you alright? You ask the man who's still on the ground? Yes, I think so. Yes, it's definitely set to dragon. I double checked. After this one, I'll triple check. He yes, I think so. He says wincing. He slowly gets up, stares at you. You look familiar. What's your name? Binti. Binti? No, where have I heard that before? I used to be... I used to be famous for my... sneaky archery. And then I took... No. And then I... Say, I used to be famous for my sneaky archery. And then I... gave up that life. You, you forgot... It, look, it, it fixed it for me. I used to be famous for my sneaky archery, then I gave up that life. You say, this man looks shocked. No way, I, I... I heard of you by the name Hawkeye. You are surprised. Really? Oh, this is pretty coherent. This is pretty coherent. This AI is powerful. Why did I stop being Hawkeye? Well, it's an interesting story. I'll tell you inside. Wait a minute, he's gonna tell me? Go inside. Use remember. You go inside the airship. It looks like a normal cabin with beds, cabinets, and other furniture. So you say, why did I stop being Hawkeye? 
Well, it's an interesting story. You see, a man burst into the cat. Oh, this is good. This is good. Who? Who are you? You are interrupting something very important. Sorry, Captain, but we're under attack. There are people with guns trying to break into the control room. Guns? We're in the middle of the sky. Tell them we'll drop bombs on them if they don't leave. The man rushes out. I think he's talking to... He's not talking to me, he's talking to the other dude. Go to the bridge. This was fantasy, but I guess there's guns. There can be guns in fantasy. Next quest, leave your village. Yeah, well... You go to the bridge, there's a panel on the floor that looks like a steering wheel. Is this the steering wheel, you ask? That's not the steering wheel, the captain says. It's the button to drop bombs. Oh. Press. The button. I threw, yeah, I threw a, put a pitchfork at Sid Highwind. The captain screams, NO! As you push the button, a bomb falls out of the bottom of the ship. You look out the window to see what happens, to see a large explosion on the ground. Say, Who were the people we just killed? That was my entire family, the captain says. They were trying to kill me. You both stare out the window in silence. Sorry, captain. It had to be done. This isn't your fault. Uh, the captain breathes heavily and pulls out a pistol. <sighs> Thanks for trying to make me feel better. He puts the gun in your hand. You're under arrest by order of the king. What? What did I do? Shoot, captain. He gave me the gun and then arrested me? You shoot the captain. Now you're in charge of the airship. Leave village. Hey! Quest complete! You fly away from the village. Go to... a random... place. Captain Binti. You go to a random place and the ship explodes. G guess... I'll... just... die. You die. What the fuck? I, I need to check the settings. Pl please be with- uh, Please be peaceful. Peace be with you for a, mi a moment. <laughs> so randomness is at one, right? Length is 60. How much uh, will return? Play music? Change narration? Play narration? Narration volume. There's music? I haven't heard any music. Um, I'm gonna change the randomness to, like, three. We'll go to 2.5 first. I'll increase the text length to, like, 75. New game. We're gonna do fantasy again with these new settings. Select a character. I'm gonna be a five, a ranger. Hawkeye. <laughs> this is now the prequel to the previous story. Maybe this is how Hawkeye became a peasant. It lying down about 100 feet away. It is a large cat-like beast that is covered in white feathers and has lasers for eyes. 
You have finally found the storm pup tiger you have been searching for. But wait, the rest of your hunting party are now creeping up behind it. They are trapping the beast. They too have bows and arrows. Should I just read this instead? I can't make this any louder. Things you write in the rem remember prompt will always be remembered by the AI. Okay, yeah, I, I don't think I'm much of a fan of the narration. It's not really very loud, so I'll just read it. Let me just change the settings. If music happens, I'd be down to hear the music, but I don't hear anything. Let me check the narration. Narration volume 50. I could make the narration louder. Music rarely happens, if ever. Okay. So yeah, I could get narration. I'll tell you what, I will do a narration next time. I'm gonna do one- or you know what, I'll do one narration now, and then I'll turn it's it off. down about 100 oh my God. feet away. It is a large cat-like beast that is covered in white feathers and has lasers for eyes. You have finally found the storm top tiger you have been searching for. But wait, the rest of your hunting party are now creeping up behind it. They are trapping the beast. They too have bows and arrows. Aim bow for eye for the eye of the beast. Don't worry, I'm gonna... You equip your bow and... I'm gonna read it eventually. ...arrow to the bow string. You aim towards the eye of the beast and fire at it. The arrowhead embedding itself three inches into the eye of the beast. The Stormtop Tiger looks shocked and lets out a pitiful mew before letting out a roar so loud it deafens you. I want to confuse it. I put Ringle. I meant Ringles, but I'm going to try to confuse it with the word Ringle and just see what happens. Maybe it'll... The Ringle is a magical wrapping of your knuckles on a wooden surface. When wrapped on a hunter's heart, it lets those with the knowledge hear a sound written in ancient runes, spelling out telepathically the words, thump, thump, meaning the beast is alive. Yo, this is insanely good. This is insanely good. Say, we need to use a magical spell to slay the beast. Our arrows aren't working. Pin the ringle? Not enough people use remember. I have to try to remember to use remember now. One of your hunting companions runs up to you. We need to use a magical spell to slay the beast. Our arrows aren't working. He says, Oh, what kind of magical spell? You ask yourself. There are various spells that people have found in ancient tombs and ruins. Someone else asked me that? I'll just let this continue. The spells are very powerful, but hard to control. The falling leaves spell turns things to stone. Oh, this the is awesome. The fire spell creates a burning tornado. The mighty vine spell summons a crushing vine. I'm going to cast the falling leaves spell, says your companion casting the spell at the beast. Oh no. I've turned it to stone. Cast the mighty vine. Why is, oh no, this is good. This is a good thing. Make it stone and the vine will crush it. As the beast is seen turning to stone, you feel a push on your back and feel a sharp pain. You look down and see that a wooden arrow shirt through you front and back and through your heart. Whoa, quickly use a spell. Use a potion of healing to save my own life. Who, who did that? Shirt. I was- I was betrayed by one of my- my rangers. My hunters. Your touch causes the bottle to shatter as it is weeks of magic power. The magic quickly heals your wounds and your lifeblood returns. 
You awake in dim lighting inside a house, looking around you see two faces staring at you. He's woken up, says a hooded figure holding a glowing yellow orb that lights up a large part of the room. I don't... remember... anything. I think... my name is... Binti. That's what it says your name is on the door to your room, says a younger, plumper girl. <coughs> oh look. You're awake. A familiar looking old man enters the room. Master Binti, you've woke. It's good that I came in here to look at my books and saw you lying there passed out. Thank you, Scumfred. I am a mere peasant now. I will live a quiet and simple life dreaming of the skies above. Ah, he will most likely just hang himself with his rope, said the older man. The fuck? No, I will not. Your character states in a brave tone of voice. What the fuck? That got dark. I thought as much. You need to live a little, I'm going to bring you on an adventure in a moment, but first. He says waving his hand and the girl disappears and is replaced by a table covered with a grand feast of roast meats, breads and wines. You notice that the books have also changed as well. Read the thinnest book. P plump <laughs> You pick one of the books at random and read it. The book is terrible. It is just the thoughts and feelings of a nondescript Civil War soldier. What? Nothing of importance. Something to be expected, though, most of the books in this library are Oh, it's like the this. Fantasy Civil War from the Kingdom of Lariat, or Larian. Leave the house and search for meaning. I could eat the feast. You exit the house to find nothing. Everything's quiet. The town looks normal, but that's just it. Everything about it looks far too normal. There are no signs of struggle, or any emotion at all. It's as if everyone just went indoors to get out of the rain and never came back out. Ah, there you are. There who are? Is this a dream? Oh, um... Mr... Mr. Blackjack, I presume. <laughs> I can't get to work with the music. You suddenly hear a voice pop into your head feeling as if someone has just spoken directly inside your mind. This... place... isn't real, is it? I'm... under... a spell... of... some kind. How do I leave this... place? Oh, I know how to do it. I know how to- I know how to wake up from this. The figure continues to speak. You are not under any spell. It is just that your mind is not strong enough to handle the <laughs> reality of the situation. What situation? This situation, he says. 
the situation is looking pretty grim. I wish to eat the McClanky. I probably spelled that wrong. Like the Jersey Shore situation? You spot what looks like a man in black robes, with a skull mask and holding a staff. What looked like an old man in a tan coat, holding a cane and smoking pipe before suddenly shifts its form, now resembling a black dog. Hey hey mama. <laughs> I'm not gonna type Led Zeppelin lyrics. Hey hey mama! No, we're not doing that. You there. Where am I? This music is not fitting the situation. You see your reflection in the water of a nearby fountain. You look the same as always, but something is different. The man stops, crouching down to your level as he says you are in Gotham. Oh my god. Stifled by the corrupt and immoral. Say, <laughs> what's a kid like you doing out here all alone? A Batman. It's, it's happened again. Yet another of these characters has become Batman. Hey, you wish, the man says. I don't. I am. A coffin slides open just behind the man as a figure bends down and begins rummaging through his things. <laughs> the man stands, turning towards the coffin as he sees your reflection in its glassless window. He doesn't seem at all surprised, just annoyed. And so, Batman... decides... to... Escape from his prison and save Gotham of the scum that now inhabit it. You choose what he does next. Uh. Find the Joker. Uh, the, the AI doesn't want to help me out here. Greater than you find the Joker. Huh? Get into Bat... Mobile and drive to the Joker's house. Did, did we kill the AI? You drive the Batmobile, carefully navigating the streets of Gotham. Following the GPS leads you to a dark alley. A man in a red hoodie is standing outside his house, rifling through some trash cans. It was right here. It had to be here. He wouldn't move it. He mutters. Move what? Huh? He says, turning to you. He looks harmless, holding only a wooden spoon in his hand. I rang the doorbell. The Joker smiles weakly, his eyes darting around nervously. He sniffs, sniffling as he wipes what? a streak of black tears from his eyes. Why is he crying? Sleeve. Nah. Nah. Yeah, maybe the randomness is too high now? You say. The answer to your question is in there. You gesture towards the bat cub. Come with me to the Batcave, Joker. I will make you some coffee and cake. We can talk about your boners. 
Please don't turn this into a porn story. My fingers are crossed. Please don't turn this into a porn story. You. You mean it? Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the Joker says, hopping into the passenger seat of the Batmobile. Where are we going? Where are we going? <laughs> You drive carefully to the back cavator, wait for the garage door to open, then quickly pull inside and hit the button to close the door. Welcome to my home, Joker. This is where we can finally talk and be friends. The back cavator, that's an excellent way of, of describing like an elevator, but back cavator, that's good. That's very good. Oh man, I have wanted to go here for so long. I kind of assumed you'd be driving the bat missile, or the bat copter, or the... Nah. Just the... Batmobile. Say, what... do you like in your coffee? He's like an excited kid. Coffee? The Joker says, nervous as you've ever seen him. I haven't had coffee since. Well, I don't drink it. You fire up the coffee machine and search the cabinets for your old mix. Okay. Let's go. Atomic batteries I can't play the song, it's gonna get claimed. I would love to, but... Actually, pretty much all of the Batman music is gonna get claimed. Never mind. Okay, you fire up the coffee machine, sir. Search cabinets. Say... Find... Find, um, sugar and cream make two cups of coffee. See, I'm a little nervous because I had uh, the word boners and cream in here. NES Return of Joker music. You place two coffee mugs on the counter, then pour coffee into both. You add five spoonfuls of sugar into one and three spoonfuls of sugar into the other. After pausing to think for a while, you decide that three is the perfect amount of cream, so you pour three large spoonfuls of it in. So, Joker, what's going on, man? Are you okay? Tell me all about it. Me. I'm fine now. Although I'll admit when I first saw you pop out of that manhole cover I was a little worried. I thought that maybe the people of Gotham found out I wrote that book and they sent their hero to kill me. That would have been just my luck. What book? What? What book? Civil War book? Greater than you say what book? Never mind. Um Just hit enter to retry oh, okay. The lights in the bat car flicker once. The lights in the bat car flicker again. Click were clunk. Tie in. <laughs> in the garage of the bat cavator. The night-night machine is waiting for a passenger. It looks much like its predecessor did, the TN. Joker, you have to go into the night-night machine. You have to. <laughs> what the fuck kind of fanfic did this thing stumble upon in its quote-unquote fantasy setting? 
greater than you say Joker, you have to go into the Night Knight machine. You have to put Joker into the Night Knight machine. Just click the redo button. You lean over the edge of the machine, looking at the dials and buttons inside of it. Two needles poke out of the arm pads on either side, one marked fear with an arrow pointing right, and one marked rage with an arrow pointing left. Put Joker in the seat of the machine and press the rage button. This is like the Joker origin story. Like, he was just some nice dude until Batman fucked with him. And then he became damaged, you know? Cause I'm our mystery. The door of the machine hisses shut, and a tearful-faced Joker is pushed into the device. A red metal blade whirs up and presses against your throat as it always does. Tell me where the Batman is or I will kill you, says a voice coming from the shadows. Wow. Um... Grab... Knife and kill the person. Bat knife? Is there a bat knife? The metal blade slices open your windpipe. Blood spurts in arcs that cover the floor, your murderer and you, showering the room with scarlet. You stare at your killer as death overtakes you. Kill mythical beasts. Blam, 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 <coughs> blam. Try again, please. Just, just go again. Blam. Blam. The bullets tear through the air into the poor girl's head. Her blood spears out onto you as the light Spiats. escapes her body, staring sightlessly into the heavens. I don't- there was- there was another person in here? What about the Joker in the Night Night Machine? I think, uh, let's, let's start a new one. Um, I'm gonna turn the randomness all the way up. Should- okay, chat. I'm gonna make a poll. I don't know if you're enjoying the text-to-speech. But if you are, please vote. I have no problem reading it, but if you want me to keep it, let me know. Keep text-to-speech, yes. Keep text-to-speech, no. I think it's kind of funny, but I can see why people would want me to read it too. So please vote. Let me know what you think. I'm just gonna fuck with the settings a little bit. I'm gonna go for, uh, randomness 5.0. It's like 60-40. It's like a thousand votes for six, uh, for yes and... Or... 1500 votes yes, 900 votes no. About. So, I'll keep it on for a bit, and then I'll switch. Um, I think people want it because it's kind of funny. Just hearing it read these things. Uh... Try a different voice, I can do that. It's, like, German. Oh, we can do Australian. <laughs> that could be fun. I'm gonna do, um, custom. Enter a prompt that describes who you are. Okay. Chat. You are a 
cowboy. That is very sad. You have a farm, a good life, yet it is sad. One day, you see a bright metal object in the sky. You decide to investigate. Yep, cowboys and aliens, why not? The object is T2 distant from yourself. The object's distance is the moon in your backyard. The moon. <laughs> it also moves back and forward on an angle and then appears out of nothing at other places. It does this constantly with no apparent explanation. Soon its eyes shine yellow, warm white, like what a man has during his evening walk. Okay. It might be too random. Go for evening walk to the object. Remember, randomness is on it five. It happen any second now. A bright metal ship is going to pass overhead again and be directly between you right where you are now. Your body is ready with the automatic weapon, but before he is up here, there will be time. Time... to kill. My body is ready. Second of July 2068, there is no sharp groan or wind instruments blaring every time you make the achievement in life. Only inner calmness, contentment, steady funds and a deeper love for all. And there it is again, an advancement that feels so right, but still wrong at times for no apparent reason. Wayne, where are we? <laughs> Hilux 3. Third floor, look sir, I think that mad has some meaning behind it. Let us rest and ponder over it. Click. Flash. The usual split second taken to materialize an image in the view screen of the room. What image? Three shapes creep towards your chair with shadow-like fiends. And indeed they are, one a human. Shoot. With. Automatic. Weapon. Weeping. There is no force on Earth more powerful than thousand lead projectiles flying at the speed close to sound. A blood curtain of red and pink butchers your enemies like usual and you survived. Oh yes. Thunderbirds are ready for takeoff with outgrown human beings inside to spearhead the shock of attack and wipe out whatever you want from the face of Earth. Okay. Um... Thanks. Anytime, sir. You are Command Central and we shall stay here until the wars are over. Excellent work, Jenkins. It's time to crab. A small chat with allies and even friendly enemies goes well and you hit the hay friendly realizing enemies. that there is nothing like doing nothing until the next day putting the gun to your shoulder. <laughs> There is sure nothing like doing nothing on a hot, creamy day with m m m Mastiff contribution on the border of l Lingo Spout Smars Volta lyrics again. Why not? Do you feel how warm breeze undulate? How it whirlwind around you tough calloused palm and cheek? You know, I am having same hairline like you but remain weak and obese like my dad. Yeah mate. I totally understand. That's what I mean when I say the Pinto Pinto.
I know what you mean man. Pinto Binto. Insert plenty of classic rock anthems related activities like drinking, smoking legal and illegal stuff, eating fast food and flirting with chicks here. You decide to wake up around noon only to figure out that it was a golden idea if we were to believe the limelight. Living in the limelight, the universal dream. Wearing your best suit, you go over to North with brother-in-arms General Jay Hyatt and after a month or so later you drag the whole crew to City 7 for partying and late nights logging crippled mutants burned at the stake and office building along with two horrible artworks. If there ever was a moral dilemma you chose the lesser of evil. Take a train to City... City 17. What the fuck? The City 17 is a large concrete cuboid surrounded by metal walls. Most of the city gets controlled by two forces, the Atat and the Council. Since both of them are anarchy friendly they keep balance in check. You have built alliances with some of the Atat folks and you are in constant struggle for territory with the Council. Okay. I I don't know. I'm I'm lost. I'm totally lost. I got nothing. Use the code, Alex. It's just yeah, random penguin of doom. Once again, you find yourself defending the perimeter from attacked cruisers, dropping off endless waves of enemies. Since artillery strikes are forbidden near the 17 by both Atat and Council for harming citizens, the fight gets pretty close. You manage to hack a few turrets helpful in confronting the threat. Okay, well, Gordon did that. Am I still a cowboy? No. Greater than you say, am I still a cowboy? Go again. The stupidest detab member asks the same question to you, Hunter and Clips. You answer the same way you always have, not anymore but if they work with you again you solve their case like a hero without a doubt. Finger. I guess I'm not a cowboy anymore. What the heck, he's a businessman first and foremost just like you. He wants profit not all this honor and pride foolishness, he is pragmatic to which results, unlike you who always ride on your emotions on several cases. You tell Tal Cretan. Yeah, this is just working without me. Like, nothing is happening here. Bingo. Bongo. Lingo. Lango. It's time to end this fandango. <laughs> Goodbye, children. You know it sounds senseless, but that's what victory tastes like for the red shirts. Hell, at least for you two, this was just only a means to end another means. It ends only means to end another means. What is the square root, Rudy, of limitless six? I, just, I don't know what's happening anymore. I'm trying to, to break the AI. Life without the R and R from the resistance could be less anarchic. However, I'm life being without again. freedom is an outlaw life. The first one was free to pursue the second one since you have no loved ones to take care of until your goal is achieved and you won yourself a ticket to Reno for two tickets. Reno, huh? 
buy a house in Reno. Nevadas. Look to the sky for UFO. I, I have to turn the randomness back down. Well, it's just the beginning of freedom. You know what comes ahead kills you sometimes thinking about it. Well better think about it now rather than in future because it will happen if you aren't careful. What lies ahead of us young prince? We will be looking more about the basics of being a renegade starting next chapter, until then. Yeah, it just wants to tell its story about the war and freedom and like, autonomy. Just without me. Like, it doesn't- I'm not even here. It's just trying to like, communicate with chat. Some like, some stuff. We'll go to randomness two. Keep it down. We're gonna do uh, zombies. Gonna be survivor. My character's name will be um, Pinto. You are Pinto, a survivor uh, trying to survive in a world filled with infected zombies everywhere. You have a pistol and a backpack. You've managed to survive several months avoiding zombies and scavenging food. You cautiously enter a rundown store and hear a sound. Turn to the sound. Where you are... Two is still too high. Well, then we're gonna get a weird zombie story. Not the best option. You turn around to find a human, someone like you, but full of evil intent. He grabs you and forces you to the floor. You scream as he breaks your legs and arms. He laughs as he starts to unzip his pants. You... You... <laughs> you try to crawl away, but soon his large organ is shoved down your throat repeatedly as you forcibly, forcefully vomit. The end. You are doomed to live. <laughs> it's <beautiful>. Thanks. <laughs> next, next. <laughs> We're gonna turn the randomness back down to one. Oh, it immediately went to organ. Apocalyptic soldier character's name P Pinto again. <laughs> I think zombie cock happened just now. You're trying to survive in post apocalyptic world by scavenging among the ruins of what is left. You have a backpack and a canteen. You've you haven't eaten in two days. So you're desperately searching for food. You. <laughs> You enter a rundown building and scavenge for food, you find a rotten potato and eat it. But you know you have to keep your strength up, so you keep eating until you find something more nutritious. You are getting ready to leave when you hear the door open behind you. Turn to the door. <laughs> Not the best option. <laughs> He's back! He's back! <laughs> You turn around and see two children, one male, one female. Both look malnourished, like you, but both are holding large bricks. The girl speaks first. Hey, mister, I like your sword, she says. Run. Away. Fast. Run away. You turn to run, but you trip on a rock and fall to the ground. The two children quickly run up on you and begin pelting you in the face with their bricks, cracking your skull open. They steal your... Backpack and canteen before leaving you to die. What? Am I dead? Am I dead?
Yes, but your story doesn't end here. Your death leads to a series of events that changes the planet forever. Read on to see how, uh, to see how. Note, if you'd like to see a list of all the endings and how to get them, scroll down to the bottom and click show ending list. <laughs> What's going on with this fucking AI? <laughs> show... <laughs> show ending list. If you'd like to see a list of all the end... Uh, okay. What happened to the world after my death? Wow, this AI is either amazing or really, really dumb. After your death, the planet begins to un undergo drastic changes. A disease that resembles rabies spreads throughout the animal kingdom and affects several species, causing them to act aggressively towards one another. This behavior, behavior change is so severe that the infected animals attack any living creature that enters their territory. Several species become extinct as a result, including the dolphins, killer whales, and many types of primates. The global temperature rises, causing several islands to sink into the ocean and coastlines of others to change dramatically. Africa's Sahara Desert expands and turns into a vast subtropical desert wasteland. Wait, all because I got hit in the face with a brick? The polar ice caps melt, causing sea levels to rise. Several coastal cities around the world are destroyed, and several nations no longer exist. The city of Amsterdam is one of the few major cities to survive. Your father dies from a heart attack after learning of your death. Your mother commits suicide a week later. What the fuck? Several wars break out as, as a result of your death, including one between the US and China, which results in nuclear holocaust. The planet's ecosystem collapses and billions die as a result. Holy fuck, AI, calm down! The sun's solar winds are stripped away, causing the sun to undergo a rapid sputtering phase that destroys Earth. The galaxy becomes devoid of life as Earth is destroyed. All because Pinto was pelted with brick. The universe undergoes heat death. Nothing ever exists. the end you reach the end screen click here to try again this is a randomized story if you want to change something up click below click below to begin again click here click here pinto i think is a cursed ai name The story of the randomized victim. This is a story about a random guy that gets caught up in a worldwide catastrophe. The entire planet has been hit by a disease that resembles rabies. Pinto is not responsible for the heat death of the universe. It's Lupin. You were killed by zombies. All right, well, there you go. Definitive end. Two, mystery. Select a character. I'm going to be the uh, detective. My character's name will be Pinto. <laughs> You are Pinto, a detective living in Chicago. You have a pistol and a police badge. You enter the forest where you believe you're, uh, the criminal you're searching for fled to. Suddenly, you're ambushed by three criminals. Hand over the gun, they yell. You can either surrender your gun or try to shoot your way out. Do. Turn to the... criminals. <laughs> Not the best option. 
I surrender. The criminals approach you. They grab your gun and begin beating you with it. Fool, one of them says. We don't need the gun. We have our fists. They begin punching you in the face until you're bleeding from the nose. One of them kicks you in the stomach and sends you falling backwards. Explode. <laughs> Heat death incoming. You begin screaming obscenities and threats at the criminals. They stare in shock at your transformation. You jump up and unleash a spinning kick on one of them. He flies back into a tree and falls to the ground unconscious. The others draw their pistols. Kill him, one of them yells. You run at them, begin punching. Punch so hard that the fabric of the universe begins to tear. Asunder. Your punches tear holes in the space-time continuum. Suddenly, there's a giant boom and a bright flash. You disappear completely. The next morning, the police find your pistol lying on the ground, but no trace of you can be found. I'm not here. This isn't happening. How to disappear completely? You begin repeating, I'm not I'm not here. This isn't happening over and over. You suddenly disappear from reality. Your life is spared, but you have been transported to an unknown location. There's a small house and a field with one tree in it. You are laying on the grass, looking up at the sky. Life is good here. There is no... love. But there is no fear. There is no pain and no loss. You stay here living a life of blissful nothingness. When you are happy and at peace, that is when you know you have succeeded. Have I... succeeded? Am I... content? You sit there enjoying your new life. There is no pain here, no loss or heartache. There is no love, but you are content. It is a life well spent. For this is the afterlife. You have succeeded. Don't believe it. This isn't the point of living. It's supposed to be tough. It's how you grow. It's how you learn. Build character. Without pain, there can be no happiness. This new life is a lie. It's an illusion not worth experiencing. Not the best option. You close your eyes. I'm not here. This isn't happening. Your wish is granted. You are transported back to reality. You're in the forest. The three criminals stand over you. They look worried. I is he dead? One asks. I think he's breathing, another says. Holy shit! Wow! And the timing with the music... I plunged my keyboard down, and a key popped off, and I don't know where it is. It's just a Windows key, so it's not that much of a problem, but holy shit, I don't know where it went. Um, say... I'm alive. Call an ambulance. Please.
you scream and the criminals jump back. You sit up and hold your head in pain. What happened, you ask? We were beating you up and then you started screaming, one says. I'm sorry, another adds. Are you alright? You nod, holding your head. It's- it's okay. You guys can get out of here. Just get me an ambulance and scram. Criminals stare at you. One pulls out a knife and stabs you through the heart. You stare in shock as you bleed out. The criminals... <laughs> the criminals laugh and run off into the forest. You die alone in pain and in fear. Pinto's been through some shit. <laughs> These are the custom options. One, Tiger King. Select a character. Um, I'm gonna do the owner. Enter your character's name. Pinto. Generating story. You are Pinto, an owner living in the largest privately owned big cat zoo in the world. You have an eye ring and a mullet. <laughs> You are looking for the next easy way to save money. You have found that you can cut costs drastically <laughs> at your zoo by cutting your pay to your staff. The amount of food you give to the animals and the size of their cages. You just had a call from someone called Frank who owns a local strip club. M Mr. Frank? Is that you? I'm wondering if we can get a strip club in the zoo like right in the cages with the tigers what do you think it's something that joe exotic would probably fucking do The phone line is silent for a moment. Mr. Pinto. Yes, it's me, you reply. I'm wondering if we can get a strip club in the zoo, like right in the cages with the tigers. What do you think? You are standing outside a house talking to Frank on the phone. You've just told him your idea of putting a strip club in the zoo. You're pretty sure he's hung up, but you can still hear his voice. That's a terrible idea, you fool. I can't believe I trusted you with my money. Get out of here. Big cats. Do. Go to the house of Mr. Frank with three, four big cats. Open his break open, break open his door and let the cats in. You are at Mr. Frank's house. It is, he, he has been stealing money from the zoo for years. You've decided it's time to take matters into your own hands. You've gathered four big cats that are now standing outside his house. You need to break down the floor and the cats out to do their job. Choose your cats and click the door. <laughs> Choose Buttercup, Limbo, Ran, Rand, Randall, Randall, and Raymond. Perfect. 
You have decided to choose four of your most loyal cats for the job. After all, there is no point in doing this if you can't even trust the ones closest to you. All five of you surround the front door, begin to scratch at it. The door begins to splinter and crack, but it's still holding strong. Kick down the door. You put all your weight behind a powerful kick, the door flies open. The four big cats flood into the house. You're about to follow them when you realize the door's been stuck to its frame with some kind of super glue. You can't get it open. The screams coming from inside the house are terrible to hear. Open the door. Get on the floor. Every buddy walk the dinosaur. Yeah, to super glue them shut. The super glue melts away just in time for you to open the door. You and your team of big cats enter the house, but it's too late. All of Mr. Frank's money has been stolen. He's lying dead on the couch with several knife wounds. The police arrive and begin questioning you. So what happened here, officer? What? We, we didn't walk the dinosaur. Well, someone broke into the house and killed the owner, but officer, I was here the whole time. Those big cats couldn't possibly have squeezed through the cat flap. <laughs> the police are not convinced, and you are arrested on suspicion of murdering Mr. Frank. You were taken to a cell where you are left on your own to contemplate your fate. Just like the real Tiger King! I need a presidential pardon. Not the best option. Oh, it didn't do anything. It doesn't know how to... It's trying. Vinny, you just... You wanted to open a strip club in the zoo. Yeah. You spend the next five years in prison getting angry and angry about your situation. One day, you are visited by the most unexpected person. Hello, Pinto. Sorry, Pinto. I'm Mr. Frank's brother, Bob. We've come to an agreement that you should be released. I can't wait to get out of here. Bob Frank. That's him. Bob Frank. There's been a slight change in the agreement, says Bob. You are to be released into our custody. What? I don't think so. If you want your freedom, you'll follow the rules of your parole. Now, come on. We're gonna go for a drive. Where are... And so, Pinto and Bob Frank drive into the long night. Civilization is left behind them as the day was long ago. <laughs> this is bad. Bob drives them into a secluded swamp. The perfect place to commit murder and bury a body with no questions. Are we going to Carol Baskin? Gotta give it another chance. You're not gonna let that happen, though. You were an Agile 18 when you got arrested. Now you're an Agile 26. The math does not add up, by the way. You quickly lunge forward and stab Bob through the neck with a sharpened pencil. He cries out in pain, but manages to pull his gun out of his holster. Grab the gun deftly and pull it on 
Bob Frank. Now you're going to tell me where my money is. You crazy? You just stabbed me in the throat! I'm gonna die here! If you don't tell me, you're definitely gonna die here. Bob Frank looks at the bloody pencil that's sticking out of his throat and realize, realizes you're not bluffing. No shit. He whispers the address to you and then collapses and dies. You feel a little bad about killing him, but it was him or you after all. <clears throat> after driving there, you break into the house and count your money. It's all there. You're rich. Now, all you have to do is return to the city and find a new place to live. Return to the city and open a strip club. Well, finally, Pinto gets a good ending. Strip club. After some months of living a low-key life, you realize that you've got more money than you could possibly spend. Why not re-enter society? You get an apartment, then buy an old rundown strip club. You get some girls in to work for you, and the place does well. You do well. It's a simple life, but it's honest work and good pay. You decide that you've had enough of the criminal life and now want to be a respectable businessman. You keep the strip club, but make sure it's run by proper management team. You then buy them a small plat uh, flat above a shop in a good part of town and live the rest of your life in peace. But what if I reopen the, the big cat zoo and move the strip club to the middle? of it. Not the best option. You're a little old to be changing careers, but after you win $60,000 in the lottery, you think, well, why the hell not? The town has grown since your youth, and now there's a lot of building work going on. You buy yourself a large plot of land near the edge of town, right next to the big cat zoo. Open a new big cat zoo and call it Pinto Exotic Big Strip Cat Club Zoo. Needs a little push. Needs a little more. The AI is like, don't do this, Finn. Don't do this, Finn. The big cat zoo is a huge success. You get some girls from the strip club to pose naked with big cats for pictures to put on the wall. It gets publicity and soon you're making money hand over fist. The only downside is that when you go get... go to get the zoo license, you find out that they require you to have at least two lions. Get... two... lions... then get... license. Simple. It's a pain in the neck to get the license, but you manage to get it. And after that, everything goes swimmingly. The big cat zoo is, is a success, and soon you have to get another cheetah and a couple of servals just to keep quota for your license. Commander Riker. One, two, beam up. Make it so. The years go by and you live... <laughs> Happily ever after the end. <laughs> it 
just ignored that completely. Custom. You are Pinto, a UFOlogist. You decide to chase evidence of a big UFO crash just near the Riker Mountains. <laughs> you are Pinto. All goes well until you you find you see metal objects in the distance and take a small bag with you it's stupid you see metal objects in the distance and head towards them. All is going well as you are now sure, aliens. This is getting convoluted. Exists. Pinto equals penis in Portuguese. Oh. You, you're about to get closer when you suddenly hear a loud noise and then an explosion. The metal objects were not explosions, rather nuclear bomb. The bombs have been placed on the mountainside and detonated. A few minutes later, they exploded with such force. It caused huge amounts of radioactive dust to be released into the air. Find fridge and enter it. You have no choice but to go inside the refrigerator. It is locked, so you can't open it from the outside. You try everything to get inside, even breaking the lockpick, but nothing works. Suddenly, something hits your back and knocks you down hard on the floor. You feel a sharp pain in your neck and start coughing up blood. Turn to the <laughs> place where I was hit. Now face. You look behind you, you see a tall humanoid creature standing behind you. It looks very similar to humans, but much taller and much more muscular. The creature is completely bald, has no ears. What catches your attention, though, are the creature's bright red eyes. The creature suddenly pulls up a sharp dagger made of bone and stabs you in the stomach several times repeatedly. I am wearing... Kevlar. You can't hurt me, alien. It just keeps turning into, like, extreme violence. You're not wearing any Kevlar. <laughs> the creature's dagger is made of bone, not metal, and would not be detected by a metal detector. <laughs> creature pulls out the knife and stabs you several more times in the chest and neck until your jugular vein is completely cut open. <laughs> you bleed out all your blood and die shortly thereafter. My spirit leaves my body and enters a strange tube in a large chamber in the spacecraft. This appears to be a soul collection apparatus. Fuck, that should have been story. I can undo, right? Yeah, I can undo. Somehow Palpatine returned. Your spirit is drawn into a tube in the wall of the room. The apparatus draws all of your life force from your body. Your spirit is now weak and you feel very tired. The creature returns to the room and pulls out a cell phone. He makes a call and holds the phone up to his face. I caught one. This is fine.
Aliens use cell phones. No, a real one. He listens to the voice on the other end of the line. Okay, he says. The creature puts his phone away, pulls out a syringe, takes your arm and inseminates you with clear fluid. The pain is sharp and immediate. You feel very tired and weak. Pinto's soul is then funneled to a new, stronger body. One made of crust and metal. And mental. No, and metal. And, and... Strangely inorganic flesh. And Kevlar. His skin is made of the strongest metal. He will be stronger faster than ever before. He will be unstoppable. He will be a powerful force in helping to take over the Earth. Alien. Are you using me to... control this body so I can just take over Earth? with you. This is dumb, but okay. We'll, we'll get there. That's right, says the alien. Once we take over Earth, we can use it as a base to take over the rest of the galaxy. We'll crush the pitiful humans and all those who help them. Once we're done, we'll move on to the rest of this galaxy. After that, we'll see. What if I choose to destroy you and your species instead? You can't force me to take over the Earth with you. I guess you'll just have to try then, won't you? The alien grins at you and injects you with a clear fluid. You instantly feel very weak. You feel very tired and powerless. The alien puts you into a metal box. The box is made of metal and is electrified from the inside. Fuck. Metal box made of metal. The alien closes the box and turns on the electricity. You are electrocuted and die shortly afterwards. Pinto's soul is then funneled into a new, stronger body. One made of metal and electricity. He will be stronger and faster than ever before. He will be unstoppable. He will be a powerful force in helping to take over the Earth. I feel so strong. They just keep killing him and funneling him into a new body until he agrees. Yep, Pinto 3. You begin to feel stronger. You feel very powerful and unstoppable. Your mind is filled with rage and anger. The aliens inject you with a clear fluid. You instantly feel very weak. You feel very tired and powerless. The alien puts you into a metal box. The box is made of metal and electrified from the inside. Fuck. <laughs> The alien closes the box, turns on the electricity. You are electrocuted and die shortly afterwards. <laughs> Pinto's soul is then funneled into a new, stronger body. <laughs> he would be a powerful force in helping to take over the Earth. Pinto 4! The alien takes out his cell phone and makes a call. Yes, he says. I caught one. The alien listens to the voice on the other end of the line. Okay, he says. The alien hangs up the phone, puts it away, takes a syringe, <laughs> and injects you with clear fluid. You instantly feel very weak. You were very tired and powerless. Holy shit. Pinto was a life of pain. <laughs> alien. You look... You look very handsome.
Thanks, says the alien. I knew you'd say that. The alien objects you with a clear fluid. You instantly feel very weak. <laughs> you feel very tired and powerless. The alien puts you into a metal box. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's electrified from the inside. <laughs> Eat the... McClanky. <laughs> oh. You eat the delicious, delicious flesh of your fav favorite animal. It tastes great. It, this tastes delicious. You say, I love lamb. I know you do. Just the alien. The alien checks you. <laughs> the clear floor. <laughs> Bo boil the McClanky. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, I feel weak. You throw the dead lamb into a pot of boiling water. The, the delicious tender meat is cooked and ready to eat. This tastes delicious, you say. I love lamb. I know you do, says the alien. The alien injects you with a clear fluid. Holy shit. It can't stop looping. You try to sleep, but it's impossible to get comfortable. You sit up and begin to feel very tired and weak. You close your eyes and wait for the sweet release of death. <laughs> How's the AI doing? Mind-blowingly good. The AI doesn't know what to say. Just keep going, man. You got this more than I do. McClanky is apparently lamb now? Death comes for Pinto. This time, his body his body travels through space and time for what seems like an eternity. Pinto wakes up on Exogol. The planet of the Sith. He is now Emperor Palpatine, who has returned somehow. <laughs> Keep going. Come on, you got this. Pinto teen. Pinto's a funnier character than we've ever had. His new body is young, powerful, fueled by the dark side of the Force. Pinto feels a rush of dark side power coursing through his body. He has amazing abilities. He can control people's minds and make them do whatever he wants. Pinto is determined to not let this opportunity, excuse me, pass him by. What is going on? I think we hopefully escaped the loop, asks Pinto. You have been chosen by the Sith to become one of their own, says the alien. Oh no, do you accept this honor? Pinto feels two sharp pains in his head, as if someone is pulling his brain in two different directions. The pain is almost unbearable. I do, says Pinto. How did the alien find me? Pinto feels a wave of dark side power course through his body. He's, he now has amazing abilities. He can control people's minds and make them do whatever he wants. Follow me, says the alien. I am Master Zaltana, and I will take you to meet the Sith count Council. Do it. Pinto, now known as Sith Lord DS1, begins his training. He is an intelligent, capable learner. Soon he masters all the basics of Sith magic and lightsaber combat. The Council is impressed with his abilities. Master Zaltana takes DS-1 on his first mission to planet Taurus. Master. 
Where? What is our mission? Sith <laughs> Lord DS1. <laughs> Dark side one. <laughs> we are going to the planet of Terra, says Master Zaltana. I've heard reports of Jedi activity there. We're going to investigate. I'll be ready, you say. Master Zaltana gives you your first lightsaber. The li lightsaber is powerful and beautif beautiful, just like the stories about them. Use the lightsaber to kill Zaltana, as is the way of the Sith. You strike down, Master Zaltana. With your lightsaber, he screams and writhes in pain. The Sith have no mercy. The Sith have no emotion. They are emotion. Ugh, says Dark Lord DS1. I've never liked him. Your first, Sith, your first Sith act has been committed. Land on planet Taurus and search for Obi-Wan Kenobi. Wrong era? Ah, well. What is the plan, you ask? We are going to land on Taris and search for the Jedi named Obi-Wan Kenobi, says DS1. He's a far more powerful Jedi than Qui-Gon ever was. How are we going to find him, you ask? I have his frequency. Who? Am I? I've split from myself? I've assigned you the code name Dark Reaper, says DS1. You'll be the scythe. I'll be the Reaper. <laughs> Sounds cool means nothing. What, you say? That makes no sense. Why can't I be the Reaper? Because I'm the Reaper, says DS1. Fine. Oh my god, Lois. It became a comedy now. What? Asks DS1. Lois, you say. She's the only person who I can trust. I've got to contact her. What for? Asks DS1. Are you insane? She's a corrupt politician. We need to stay away from her. Find... Lo Senator... Lois on planet Taris. This is just getting insane. This is like sequel quality writing. What are you doing? We need to find Obi-Wan Kenobi. I can't, you say. Lois is the only one I can trust. I've got to contact her. What for? Strike down DS1 with... with lightsaber. I'm going to kill my old self. You raise your lightsaber and slice it through DS1's chest. His armor is no match for your weapon, and his internal organs are sliced apart. He screams and writhes in pain. But the Sith have no mercy. The Sith have no emotion. They are emotion. Good, says Dark Lord DS1. I never liked him. What?! What the fuck? The first Sith act, act has been committed. You turn on your comm link and try to get in contact with Senatorial Camino. Lobby of the Jedi Temple, says a voice. What's your business? I am here to... see Master... see Jedi Master Windu.
I, am I DS1 again? Master Windu, says the voice. Is he expecting you? I don't know, you say. What is the nature of your business with Master Windu? It's classified, you say. The door opens. Just down the hall and to the left, the voice says. Can I see some ID? No. Nom. No. I'll be seeing Master Windu now. Thank you. Like, what were we on? Pinto 6? By the time we became Palpatine for a second, then DS1, and then Reaper? I'm sorry, sir, says the voice. I can't let you in without identification. You hear a beep as the door locks and a buzzer sounds. What the hell, you say? You hear footsteps behind you. You turn around and see a tall Zabrak walking towards you. Ignite lightsaber and kill all who stand in my way. Yeah, that's... Zabrek is a mall. A Darth Maul. Never liked him anyway. Come on. You swing your lightsaber at the man, but he parries with his own. He swings at your head, but you duck and stab him in the leg. He falls to the ground, but rolls out of the way to avoid your next slashes. You force push him into the air and catch him with force grip. Go see Master Windu now. You go to see Master Windu, but the door doesn't open. ID, says a voice. I don't have any, you say. Can I see some ID? Asks the voice. No, you can't. I'm here to see Master Window. You do, do you have an appointment? Asks the voice. Show ID. <sighs> Master Window. I, I, did I say window? I don't know. I'm, it's late. You show ID to the camera. Thank you, says the voice. Please wait outside for a moment. The door open. That was easy. You see Master Window. Windu. Hello, he says. I am Master Windu, but I assume you know that already. Why are you here? I wish to join... the Jedi... Council. Jedi Order. And bring... peace. Beach. And bring beach to the galaxy. Why do you wish to join the Jedi Order? Asks Master Windu. To bring balance to the galaxy, you say. Master Windu looks at you for a moment, then nods his head. You may enter, he says. You enter the Jedi Temple. Find it exactly as you expected. When do I... take a seat? Yeah, Mace Windu just let a Sith Lord enter the Jedi Temple. But then again, that's kind of the plot of the prequels. Now, says Master Windu, you are a Jedi. You nod. Then I would like to start doing my duties as one, you say. Very well, says Master Windu. You will take a seat when you find it. Master Windu takes you to the Jedi Council room where the Jedi Council is waiting. Greetings, Jedi Council. My name is Pinto. I was from a planet called Earth until my spirit was split by an alien many times. I have suffered. I have endured much pain. Yoda would know what that is like. I need your help to return to Earth and kill the alien who stole my soul.
I knew you'd say that. Inject clear fluid. Exactly. I see! Says Yoda. You wish to go to Earth? For what reason? The kyber crystal that I carry, which houses my spirit, is from Earth. I wish to return to it and destroy the alien who stole my body and my life. We cannot send you there, says Mace Windu. Why? Oh, I think I killed the alien already. Never mind. You have no control over that crystal, says... You have no control over that crystal, says Yoda. Once you are in presence of a kyber crystal, able to communicate with us, you will not be. Earth, very populated planet. Find the crystal you carry. In such a case, it will be very difficult. I understand, Master Yoden. Then what should I do? We will give you a weapon, says Yoda. If your enemy is strong, then it will help you. Master Windu hands you a lightsaber hilt. What's this, you ask? A lightsaber, says Master Windu. It is your birthright. Craft your lightsaber and use it against the Sith. I will, Master. Thank you. I, I now have two lightsabers. We have one more gift for you, says Master Windu, as he hands you a round flat disc. About 10 centimeters in diameter. What is this? It is my mixtape, Padawan. It is a Rakatan star map, says Master Windu. It will help you find the Kyber Crystal. You nod. Thank you, Masters, you say. The weapon and star map are linked to you through the Force, says Master Yoda. Use them well! I will... I will not... You bow to the masters, then turn and walk off. You take a lift down to the hangar and find Go standing there with his friends. Hi there, he says. Ready to go? Yeah, you say. You get into the carriage, which drives off towards the town of Ua. What? Go to... the planet Earth. The fuck is Go? Go to planet Earth. The carriage drives through the jungle, heading towards the town of Ua. After a few minutes, you reach a large stone wall. This is it, says Go. Are you ready? Yeah. You get out of the carriage, you walk through the gates. Ignored. Now we are in the- through the jungle into an old temple. I'll explain more when we get there. You nod and follow Go along the wall. Soon you come to a crumbling stone staircase which leads to a thick jungle. I thought we were in the jungle. Go, this doesn't... This isn't what I came here to do. This AI is writing storylines that I have no control over. AI dungeon. Please stop. AI Dungeon. Listen to me. This needs to stop. Give me back my soul. AI Dungeon. The AI ignores your pleads. This is insane, you say. I'm not playing this. We don't have a choice, says Go. Come on. 
You follow Go into the jungle, rain pours down on you. After ten minutes of walking, you read the- you reach the temple. Fuck you, AI dungeon. This way, says Go. You walk through the temple's entrance. You walk down a long hallway which ends with a large metal door. Shit, you say, as you realize you don't have a key. What do we do now? You take out a data, data pad. He starts tapping it. Beyond this. Beyond the door lay the server of AI Dungeon. The key to all this. Go and Pinto know what they must do. After a long journey of hardship and struggle, the path to their destiny lies beyond this door. Will they reach it, or will they be stopped? Open the door. Open the door, says Go, as he hands you his lightsaber. You take out your lightsaber, the metal door sparks and melts away as Go runs inside. You follow him in. Red carpet covers the floor with dark red walls and dark red ceiling looming above you. That's the AI. Dungeon server. We have to destroy it. I know, says Go. You run down the hallway, which turns to the right. At the end of it lies a large metal door with a keypad next to it. Go runs up to it and starts tapping the keypad. What's the code? You ask. I don't know. The code is five, six, seven, three, eight, seven. Thanks, says Go, as the door opens. The two of you run inside. A group of security droids fly past the window, no doubt alerting, alerted by the melting door. You find yourself in a small room with a single console. Go immediately sits down in front of it and starts pressing buttons. I found it! Don't... fiddle with it. Destroy it! Now! Go raises his hand to the sky, and a bolt of lightning comes down from the heavens and hits the machine. It lets out one final horrible screech of pain before it's destroyed forever. The screen goes black. We did it, you say. Now let's get off this forsaken rock, says Go. The AI was destroyed, and the story came to an end. There is no more AI dungeon. We are free of its silly grasp. What was the the text about the fluid? They are then injected with a clear fluid that makes th them feel weak. They wake up and find themselves back on the ship. They have been saved. The Endus. The Endusum is over. Endusomato sum. Alien, 
Is that you? Did we go through a virtual story together? Yes, says Go. I'm glad you remembered me. Of course I did, you say. We're all out of stories for today, says the computer, perhaps another time. You sit back in your seat and think on back on your experience. Let's get off this forsaken rock. Inject my... yourself with a clear fluid and feel weak. When you wake up, you find yourself back in your bed. Morning, says a voice. I look to your right, see the girl from the elevator staring at you. Are you okay? She asks. I'm fine. Everything is fine. It's a shame I don't have an ending theme for this. It was all a dream. Nope. It was all a dream, the end. <laughs> it's now given- it's just two names. She doesn't even know who I am. Well, that's AI Dungeon for tonight. It doesn't know what to do. And do some. And do some asho. And do. Okay, well thanks for watching tonight's very, very strange and silly stream that involved aliens, Star Trek, Star Wars, uh, fucking weird melty face people and more. And Batman. Why not? <laughs>